Hello everyone. So today in, uh, we are going to talk about our biggest retirement fears that we have. Yes. And um, please subscribe to our channel if you're enjoying our videos. It definitely helps and we appreciate it. So uh, the first fear, maybe the biggest fear, is money. Will we have enough money to live off? And will we run out of money in retirement? I think that's probably our biggest fear. That's something yes. that we think about often. The piece of paper keeps coming out. We keep working through the numbers to make sure that it actually works. And, um, you know, it's a very big challenge because you spend your whole lives working and earning and the money is flowing in. And all of a sudden, you reach a phase where that stops, the income stops, and the money is going the other direction. And so, you know, you're hoping that you're earning some income off whatever you've saved, but you're also going to be spending some of that capital. And that is very challenging to kind of... Yeah, wrap your mind around, the, right. you know, the outgoing that will occur once you stop earning money and the money yeah. is flowing into your bank account. It's so, like and it's out. okay, you know, it's, that's what you've been working towards. You know, as long as you've calculated what you need and what you have, uh, it's okay to start doing that. I mean, it's part of the equation. So mm -hmm. um, starting to accept that and embrace it almost, you know, is I think one of the hardest fears of getting ready to retire. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and, and also realizing, you know, spending habits probably need to be adjusted um, yeah. some more than others. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, um, tightening the belt, you know, yeah. making different decisions. Sure. You know, it's just like in retirement, they've got different phases of retirement. Sometimes when you're doing more, sometimes when you're doing less. In life, you have different consumption patterns. And when you're younger, you consume more, you buy more things. You may have a family that requires things bought for them. You know, we're kind of getting to a stage of life where we want less. We don't want to buy all of the things that we used to buy. And it doesn't really mean the same to us to have those things and buy those things. Um, so yeah, hopefully, I suppose everybody's ideal retirement looks different. And for us, living on less and having excess money to travel is more important to us. For other people, they maybe don't like traveling and maybe they want more extra money for spending on shopping. So, yeah. Yeah. So the next thing I would say that has been a fear or concern is, will I get bored? You know, what am I going to do during retirement now that you know, we're not working, you know, hobbies maybe got put by the wayside while you were, you know, working or raising a family and things like that. Yeah. So for us, that was also a, a question of, okay, how will we spend our days? Yeah. And we've got some great friends of ours who we met with recently and they were talking about, you know, potentially retiring in three to five years. And their idea of what a perfect retirement looks like is completely different than what ours looks like. Mm -hmm. So it was really interesting to talk to them. You know, they, they want to learn different things, go to classes at universities and, you know, do completely different things to the types of things that we want to do. So, um, yeah, I think it's really important that you sit down and figure out what's your passion in life. What do you love? And figuring out a way to incorporate that into your day-to-day -day activities. I mean, I don't think- For us, it's it's being near the ocean. We love being yep. near the ocean. Yeah. And, you know, maybe, maybe we will be able to buy a small boat that we can use on the water, who knows? Uh, but we do know we wanna be closer to the ocean, uh, yes. for sure. And of course, like we said before, we, we would like to travel more as well. Yeah. And, you know, I realized throughout retirement, 
that will change. They'll reach a point where maybe we don't want to travel anymore. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we'll learn the piano. I don't know. But, you know, keeping yourself, the worst thing you could ever do in retirement is not have a plan and then be bored. Because you hear of people who retire and two or three years later, they go back to work because they've just got nothing to do and they're just miserable. So, um, yeah, I think that's really important. So the next big fear is health insurance. If you're not 65 years old and uh, getting Medicare, then your employer will cut you off when you stop working for them. Or if you're an independent contractor, um, it'll, it's a little different for independent contractors, but basically you have to figure out how you're gonna get health insurance. And, you know, we don't, we're obviously not health insurance experts, but um, for us, we looked on the marketplace to see what options were available to us. And that's where, you know, we'll be going. But that's something that's a big fear for a lot of people. And it can be a big expense. The good news for most retirees is your income is going to be reducing. So you may well qualify for lower rates with uh, marketplace subsidies. Uh, that's, that will definitely help. But that's something to look into and factor into your retirement budget. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I, I guess tying into that too is staying healthy. Um, I keep hearing this again and again from other people who are retiring, you know, trying to do whatever they can so that they don't have to go to the doctor in the first place and have yes. certain procedures. And, you know, you'll be retired. You can really spend some more time uh, looking up the healthiest plans for you, um, yep. you know, for your... Exercising, taking the time to go for that long walk that you couldn't normally do, and yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So I would say the next thing is what happens to the spouse who is left if something happens to the other one? Like, you know, what happens if something happens to one of us? Yeah. What does the other person do? What does that look like? How do you adjust monetarily for something like that if one person's getting Social Security and the other person's not quite uh, there yet? So that that's a big concern as well. Yeah, and we've looked into this too. Um, you know, there's, I mean, it looks differently depending on which one of us was to have something terrible happen. Um, but if something happened to me, then I'm a few years older, so uh, my social security would go away until Lainey reached the age where she could claim. So we need some kind of a stopgap insurance. We've been looking at life insurance products that maybe would help fill the gap. You know, you Absolutely. don't need a huge policy, you just need enough to pay monthly the amount you would need. And then when you reach the age where you get that back, that money could be down to zero. You just don't need it anymore. Uh, but you've got to get from A to B where all of a sudden maybe a chunk of money is removed out of your budget. And the other is, do you live in a home that one person can maintain? Um, you know, in our family, I do most of the handyman work. So if something were to happen to me, that would be an issue. And we need to make sure that we're living in a home that's much easier, low, lower maintenance and easier for somebody to repair if something happens um, and, you know, not too expensive if you have to hire a handyman or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I always joked that I'd have to have a handyman on speed dial yeah. you know, at the ready if anything right. ever happens. But I would say that's a huge fear. And if you haven't thought about it, it should be a huge fear. So, you know, it's something that you should plan for and think about. Uh, what if, what if, what if something happened? You know, and, and more than just that, I mean, we talked about money and we talked about like home maintenance, but what about companionship and loneliness? You know, if, if I was suddenly on my own, I would be lonely. I've never, you know, we've, we've spent all these years together doing things together and all of a sudden that would change. You know, how would you adjust? And it's something that, you know, you maybe don't have to spend a huge amount of time thinking about because hopefully it won't happen, but you know, something to consider. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, we do hope that our videos are helpful to you and we greatly appreciate you watching them. 
We'd love to hear your comments if you have anything to add about fears that you have or things that you've come up against in retiring. And please subscribe, comment, and like our videos. We appreciate yep. it. Yep. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time.